Hey guys, before we get into it, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like my content, click the bell here. Hit all. This way you can get an alert every time I post a video, which is usually 6 p.m. EST every day. Also guys, please like and share. And keep in mind that this is a comprehensive video about universal basic income. Love you guys. Oh, thanks for the follow back yesterday, my man. I'm glad to come on the stream. Hey, yo, no, I, I appreciate you sticking around for to, to get the points to get a follow back. That means a lot to me. I really appreciate, you know, you guys consistently. Am I late, Papa? No, I I'm never the late. I came across this video on my For You page, 10 million views from Bad... They say, you guys saying it's Bad Baby? I feel like it would have been better to be, like, Bad Barbie. Does that make sense? To me, it does. Because I said so. Anyway, uh, Danielle Bergoli or whatever... Uh, for those of you who don't know, I mean, you know who she is. She's like the she's like platformed himself off af, like off of Doctor Phil by being like a really shit bad kid, <laughs> a shitty kid. And she comes out about allegations when it comes to like the ranch, which is I guess whatever facility they send some of these kids to who are problematic. So let's watch her thing, and then she has a whole YouTube video. We're gonna watch that, and then we're gonna do all this. And Doctor that. Phil, I'm going to give you from now till April fifth to issue an apology. Not only to me. I hope that he issues it on April 1st. I'm sorry. I can't do his voice. But to Hannah and any so. other child that you sent to Turnabout or any other program like this. And if you don't, I'm going to handle things my way. Should I practice? Jessica, I'm sorry. Daniel, Berg I'm sorry. In the middle of I'm sorry. I went, I went on the Dr. Phil show and my mom and my grandma knew they were sending me here. I didn't know I was going. I went school shopping right before because school was supposed to start when I got home from LA from doing the show. So part of the whole Dr. Phil show is they send these kids to either Turnabout or these other programs that are also in Utah, but they're all wilderness programs and they're all fucked up. Dr. Phil. Right, that was just a clip. I don't know why I watched it. So imagine like this was his reaction to her. Dr. Phil responded, of course. Shut the hell up, bitch. Go kill yourself. Go sit in the middle of the road and let a car run over you. You're ugly. You're disgusting. I'm going to kill you. You're an alcoholic. Oh. I'm he clapped back. Your, your, your response. Your response, bad Barbie. <laughs> bad baby, sorry. Oh, God. Um, anyway, let's watch the YouTube video. Uh, <laughs> uh, before we get into the YouTube video, I want you guys to understand something. Bad baby, Danielle Bergoli, whatever. She's like a, she's a horrible kid. Terrible, probably a bad person as well. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Here's the thing, right? Okay. She's a bad kid because she had shitty parenting. And I've got to say that I find it interesting that our solution to worthless parents is like hey let's send the kids to a camp right like how about hey let's just hit, let's send the mom to a camp she's a shitty there's no like you don't magically accidentally have shitty kids like it just doesn't happen it just doesn't happen right like there are some good parents that have kids go down the wrong path for like other reasons like oh maybe they get involved with a gang or whatever and like i get it but like most of the time you're a shitty parent you're a terrible parent. I was a problematic kid, and, like, I'm actually, you know, I grew up to be pretty functioning, right? My mom put a lot of work into it. That's your fucking problem, right? Now, of course, like, single mother or single parent households tend to perform worse because, you know, you don't have the lack of a parent. All that other nonsense. I get it. Totally makes sense. But still, you're kind of a shitty parent. You know what I mean? Like, you know. Anyway, she got to go to a camp for free, and I will say that like, these types of camps are like 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 rampant with abuse. It's so easy. You're put in a situation where your parents are consenting to something for you, and you're somebody that nobody's going to believe because you're considered a shitty person. And so, like, it makes it difficult for people to even speak out. And so, we're gonna go into that with the context that like Daniel Bergoli is only a shitty kid because she had shitty parents, and. People aren't going to believe her because she's a shitty kid, which just kind of like, you know, keeps the cycle going of why these places get to go get away with potential abuse. I don't know if there actually is abuse, but I think all this context is necessary. So let's watch this. Uh, let's watch this. It's a bad start, I'm going to say, because it's like, oh, all statements in this video are my opinion only and are based off of personal experience. They are not to be taken as statements of fact. Do your own research. Okay. You're supposed to be the research, right? So, like, <laughs> you're, when you when you're like, "Hey, guys, this is just like my interpretation of something," that's a that's a point against. That's one point against you. You know what I mean? Like, you lost a point um, because, like, you're basically saying, "Hey, none of these things can be verified." 
I was 13 years old when I went to Turnabout Ranch. I feel like it's very important for me Hold to on. speak on this. Um, let's put the subtitles on. Because, like, who can really understand what the fuck this girl's saying? Because I kept my mouth shut for so long. I did touch on it a couple times in different situations, but I really want to get my whole story out there and let everything just be out because that's the thing with these places is you have no evidence. You don't have a phone there. They don't have cameras there. Like, there's no evidence of none of this. And obviously, all the staff is in on it, so they're not going to snitch on each other. All you really have is the kids that are there. So a young lady, her name is Hannah, she recently... Um, spoke out because while she was there she was uh, sexually assaulted and then when she reported that she was assaulted uh, she was punished by staff let's look into that um because like again these like these types of like power dynamics i know we use that word a lot but they can really like set up for a really shitty situation um okay i'm assuming this is yeah fox 13 okay so in Utah, sexual abuse allegations by a teen against Turnaround Ranch in I, es, Escalante, whatever. The file with the woman's blah, 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 blah. okay. <clears throat> Hannah Hannah was 17 years old when she was brought to the ranch in October. Two, 17 years old, really? That's kind of old for the like, whatever. Anyway, she claims she was sexually assaulted by a male staff member 10 days after she arrived, but she did never report the incident because of fear of retaliation. Went to the lawsuit at the ranch. I was alone, isolated from my family. Said, okay, one month later, I claimed she was up at the same staff member and reported the incident of females that she was claiming. Uh, she claimed she was called a liar, but okay. So here's the thing she faces immediate retaliation and punishment for writing the letter, including being forced to face a wall or shovel manure for hours, left outside in freezing temperatures, and forced to sleep on a wooden plank. I expected to be treated with understanding. So um <clears throat> She's very yeah. So here's the thing about this. There's a lot going on here, which is like very difficult um, to verify. But like one of the things is is that like okay, so let's let's say let's just say that she was that she had a consensual mutual interaction with one of the staff members. It can't happen. It literally doesn't exist. If there's any physical interaction between a staff member and her, it's instantly sexual assault. Um, because like in this scenario, they're basically their bosses. It would be the same thing as if, uh, if like a security guard slept with a prisoner. There is zero way for you to actually give consent at all. There's no way based on how intense this power dynamic is. It is impossible to differentiate like um, somebody like consenting mutually because they like the person and them being like subjected to a situation where that person is the only available individual um, or like that person's just trying to get better treatment this that or the other thing there's just no there's no way you mean a prison guard what did I say did I say something else uh, prison guard I don't know what I said but you understand my point um, of course we can't var like validate this or verify it rather so <clears throat> uh, and that girl was 17 right that girl we're talking about was 17 it doesn't matter if it's a legal age, though. I said security guard. My, my mistake. I meant like a prison guard. Okay, let's get back into this. Now, when I seen the punishment she was given, I knew like, okay, I, yeah, I really have to say something. And again, it doesn't matter. Like if you're, if you're in like, this is effectively a form of jail. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's effectively a form of jail. There's no way you can give consent to like an officer. You understand what I'm saying? You can't give consent to uh, like a prison guard. It just can't happen, and this is this is a form of jail. I mean, it's like consensual jail, whatever. You get my point, anyway. I mean, like, I really have to have her back on this because I I truly believe that they did that. So, Doctor Phil, I am going to give you from now till April fifth to issue an apology, not only to me but to. He's like, it's not jail, it's glorified summer camp. They're forced to be there. It's like effectively a prison, like it. And they're forced to like do chores. Like the whole point is them to like learn how to be functioning adults because they had shitty parents. Like it is effectively a form of jail, right? But it's like parental consented jail. Okay, let's keep in mind what it is. Like it is what that is what it is. It's a boot camp. It's very similar. You understand my point? You get what my point is here. The based on the position of power in this scenario, there is absolutely no way there could be a consenting relationship between a staff member and somebody like attending that glorified summer camp. Do you understand? To Hannah and any other child that you sent to Turnabout or any other program like this, and if you don't, I'm gonna handle things my way. I don't know what that means, I'm curious. 
somewhere in the middle of August, I went I went on the Dr. Phil show, and my mom and my grandma knew they were sending me here. I didn't know I was going. I went school shopping right before because the school was supposed to start when I got home from LA from doing the show. So part of the whole- Is that a real hair? Well, Dr. Phil's show is they send these kids to either Turnabout or these other programs that are also in Utah, but they're all wilderness programs and they're all fucked up. People are asking, like, why does she want an apology from him specifically? So, like, I don't know if he would know the, about the abuse. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the show's fault um, if there is abuse in those situations, but, like, obviously he's the high-profile target. So going after him if there is abuse within these things would usually have the snowball effect of all of those different facilities being looked into. It makes the most sense for her to go after him um, because he was, like, sending them there. So, yeah, I don't, uh, you know, if her what she's saying, if her allegations are correct... That's the target I would go after, too. It makes the most sense. Okay, so Turnabout is in the middle of Escalante, Utah. It's a very, 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 very small town. It's got one gas station, one, one grocery store. Everybody knows everybody there. You see you're in the middle of nowhere. You know there's nowhere to run. If you try to run out there, you're either, they're gonna find you, you're gonna get in more trouble, or you're, if you do get away, you're gonna get eaten by a coyote or something. Cause it's took in there against my will. They give you transporters. Just so you know, against her will, like she cannot, like her parents sent or her mom sent her there. So like, you know, that's flavorful language to try to set a scenario, you know? Um, transporters <sighs> are... But she's not wrong about how isolated it is. It makes it very difficult to escape. Well, you're not supposed to escape anyway, but... Two people, a male and a female, that come in in the middle of the night. They don't tell them where they're going. They just take them. They handcuff them. They put them in the car. It's basically like kidnapping. We got... Th if I, That might have been for, like, the show to push up, like, a... Like, I don't know what she's talking about. I'm assuming it's, like, something where they do this whole performance where they grab them in the middle of the night and they bring them there so that they're all, like, disheveled. That's an issue. The pa that's a parent's fault. That's the ranch's fault. And that's actually Dr. Phil's fault. That's like, that is to an extent, like a weird, bizarre, like psychological torture. If I'm right about the way that they do these things, I'm not a super big fan of Dr. Phil. There, I got out of the car and I just seen it was like, it looked like, like nothing. It was just super dark. I seen like all the circles and stuff. And I seen the little cabin and I was like, oh shit, I'm not built for this. Like I'm this little bougie ass. So for the first three days you're there, there's no showering. They put you in a of course, no showering is a form of abuse. Like, there's no, like, in a first world country, not being allowed to take a shower would be considered a form of abuse. Circle, which is a, it's a TP. It's a little TP, but it's open. And you have to sit there for three days. They wouldn't let me lay down for nothing. Like, if that's true, it's also like another form of abuse. I was falling asleep and they were like, uh uh, get up, get up. So I'm just sitting here. Like, yeah, that's like, that's like psychological torture, not letting somebody sleep. If they're true, those things are true, those are forms of abuse. This is gonna be really bad. When I seen these people have no sympathy, I was like, oh, I'm really, like, I'm really doomed. They strip you from your whole personality. You have to act like just whoever they want you to act like. They that part is because you're a shitty kid. Like, let's just be honest here. Like, they, yes, that's the whole goal of that place. Like, the abuse involved, uh, uh, that potential abuse involved has nothing to do with them stripping. You're a, you're a bad person because you're shitty parents. Like, that's the whole point. Oh, they strip you down and try to change you. Yeah, that's the goal. That's what we would hope would happen. It didn't work. It didn't seem to work, but that's the goal. They told me, okay, these are what your chores are going to be. I don't remember what they were, but they were like, these are what your chores are going to be. This is what you're going to be doing. Here's your level one binder. Yeah. You do the same thing every day. Chop wood, take care of the animals. This place is all about yeah, taking away privileges. Like, okay, yes. yeah, the phone is a privilege, TV, like all that. But they take away like necessity privileges, like sleeping on a bed, eating good food. So like sleeping on a bed, what do they have? You sleep on a cot? A cot is fine. Like I used to be, I'm an Eagle Scout. I used to go out and do shit like this whole time. I had to get the thing that's called the Order of the Arrow, which is like basically a boy scouts within boy scouts and i'm a brotherhood member and like the or the the ordeal for that thing was like a two or three day long thing where you cannot say a single word and they feed you i think like 500 calories or whatever like they give you like a half of a fruit for like breakfast um and then the same thing for like dinner and then they give you like a kind of a reasonable meal for lunch the whole point is like about like learning survival skills and you do chores constantly it's all you're allowed to do um and then after it's all over they give you a big ass feast but like this doesn't sound like torture not being cold and as to the voluntary thing that was voluntary for me uh but her parents gave, or mother gave her like they, they volunteered her for this so cold. and not being cold i mean like what food are you so they say not good food we that's very subjective what is good nutritious food is good food they may have just been feeding her like oatmeal that had all the recommended vitamins and minerals there maybe she wanted probably wanted hot cheetos or something and she wasn't getting them you know being cold i mean i that i don't know that's uh i don't know 
I remember the first time I got in trouble. Now, I, this is my first time being here. Like, I don't really, like, yeah, y'all explain to me the rules, but I'm 13. Like, I don't really know, like, exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. There's been times where I, uh, I reported um, another student acting inappropriate or um, just anything like that. It didn't even have to do with me, and I would get in trouble for just witnessing it. If so you reported a ch another kid, like, getting bullied by, like, their peers or something, they would just say, well, maybe that's what they need or like something like that. Uh, that's pretty shitty if it's true. But again, let's keep in mind that like the, this girl was like a 13 year old, really troubled kid. So it's hard to say like her interpretation of what a bad thing is, is very different from the interpretation of a normal person, right? So it seems like her sleeping on a cot is abuse to her. Like, oh, you don't give us beds. I give you a cot. That's a bed. Like so you, could sleep, you can sleep in a sleeping bag and you're going to be OK. Uh, it's really going to be OK. Like, that's not abuse, right? That's, like, the scenario you're in. So it's hard to differentiate what she's telling to be. She's not, like, a point of, like, of, like of moral authority, I guess you say. Or, like, authority. Like, she doesn't understand what, like, good parenting is. Even though there was written rules. Send her to Camp Laszlo. <laughs> if if a staff was angry at the moment or if you just did something that they felt was bad, you, they, you would get your own punishment. Like, they would make up their own punishment for you. It's like, really frustrating. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Even if you don't know the rules. If you fuck up, you're still in trouble. It's, there's not no, I didn't know. But that, but there we go. Again, that's how it works in society. Just so you guys know, your education of the law is irrelevant. You should be educated on it. Uh, usually your parents teach you pretty well. Well, but clearly not here. Okay, that's how life works. Like, you can't run a stop sign and go, nobody taught me. No, that's not how it works. Like, you should know right from wrong, but you don't. So now we have to learn through experience, right? Uh, you didn't have the mother to tell you not to run a stop sign. So now you got to run it. And you got to get in trouble. That's basically what's happening. You're still, you're still in deep shit. Shit that's minor is major to them. So if you do something like the tiniest, tiniest thing, you get a check. If not, you have to be on. Oh, a check. That's the point. You don't know what you're doing. And what is tiny or big, big or small to you is also like uh, up to your interpretation. Reflection. Reflection is the punishment. When you Sounds do something like school, so yeah. bad or if you do anything that ticks them off, you have to go on reflection. If you walk in the reflection what is that you just the arena for hours on end you sit outside in the cold on the on the floor you have to pick up piles in a wheelbarrow sounds like chores of horse shit and they want big okay. piles so if you have to do 25 piles you're really doing like 50 wheelbarrows so okay what i had to do for like my order of the arrow was like literally demuck a lake if you guys have ever done that you pull out like all the shit out of a lake like frogs and also it gets that's dirty work it's still work it's not abuse to make you have to move manure around like it's just you <laughs> while i was there just a lot of crazy things happened i seen a kid get held down for trying to leave just honestly i don't think he was trying to run away i think he was just trying to like walk out the door and just like get some time to himself and they restrained him like that's kind of the problem so she's like yeah you know this kid was just trying to like walk out the door i don't think he was trying to run away but he was trying to walk out the door and they restrained him like your interpretation that he was just trying to get some air or whatever um that's how that hurts your argument because you think that that would be appropriate given the circumstances. It's not. It's not. And that diminishes your perspective because you're not even. So it'd be one thing if she came here and said like, hey, I've learned a lot as I got older. I understand boundaries better. And like while I was there, um, there were a lot of shitty things that I did and I got in trouble for, uh, which were my fault. But there are also things that I noticed that were like really bad. And they roped them in like and they, and they kind of just like gaslit the fuck out of you to make it seem like they weren't things like these were things that were supposed to be normal. That would have been what she would have had to say. The problem is, is that she she hasn't grown as a person to understand proper boundaries. So thinking that it's appropriate for somebody who's there to be like basically recorrected because they're a shitty kid, think it's appropriate for them to walk out of the facility doesn't make sense from a liability perspective. If that kid gets out, it's on the ranch and the parents can sue, right? So you don't really seem to have too much of an understanding of like the dynamic here, even now that you've had like what, several years to reflect. I don't even know how old this woman is. How old is bad Barbie? How old is bad... Barbie. She's 17. Is that what you guys are saying? She's 17. So she's so she she doesn't know shit. They held him down. They they had no problem holding kids down, which is against the law. You're not it's to touch it's, the kids. So that's but. actually a, that's a lie. So I know New York State enough that there are like skip protocols. Skip is basically protocols where you can uh you have to like correctly restrain people given particular parameters it is legal to do on kids there's just more regulation when it comes to it weird stuff like with i think like you have to like hold somebody's hand 
in a correct way. It's so bizarre, but it's not illegal to do. Oh. There's a lot of parameters, for instance, like you can do skip on a kid, but you can only do it for 10 minutes and you have to call a supervisor that if another 10 minutes goes by, you have to let them go. And then if they continue the, the thing, you restart the process. It's not illegal to restrain kids. There's just a big protocol on it. And the fact that you don't know that also speaks against what you're talking about. But they had no problem doing that. It's just our word against the staff's word when you're there because there's no witnesses, there's no cameras, you don't have a phone, there's none of that. That's why I was always so scared to speak out because it's like no one's going to believe me. A lot of things that like happened to me there, I was... That I understand, but you're not really helping yourself with a lot of your interpretations. It, it hurt me so bad because I was genuinely like confused. I'm writing letters to my mom. Oh, you're confused because you have a shitty parent. I'm like, mom, I will do anything. Like, you don't understand what this place is like. Like, you can't do this to me. Like, I will do anything. I'll do therapy every day. Like, I... Well, it's tough love. Yeah. This is what happens. If you did those things beforehand, we wouldn't be here. We'll go through an uh, out, uh, outpatient program, all that. Like, just please let me come home. The staff when I got there was this dude, Jimmy, and this dude, Ted. These are the night staff. Two of the night staffs around me, they were really, really sweet. One morning I was cleaning up for breakfast and one of the staff members was standing right next to me and she had her walk on her, so I heard everything. Uh, one of the kids, he had tried to steal a car or something. Everyone was screaming on the walkies like it was really crazy and he ended up killing one of the staff members. They made all the kids that were at Roundy come down and then they didn't. They told us not to tell us anything. A day later, they have us all, all every kid that's at Turnabout, they have us all in a circle and they're like, listen, there was an incident. I know some of y'all heard it over the walkies, Jimmy died. And so we're all freaking out because Jimmy was, like I said, he was one of them that was there the first day I got there. He was really sweet. Not only did Jimmy die, but one of the other staff members that was there at the time, Alicia, who was the daughter of the nurse. So really quick, like th here's the thing, and it's unfortunately contradictory to what she's saying. Before she was defending somebody trying to walk out of the ranch because they just needed some air or whatever. But this person, this is what happens when you don't like have proper restraints on people. This person grabbed a car, stole it and killed somebody. And so, like, you realize that, like, you know, you advocated for somebody to basically run away before, but now it's all of a sudden, oh, it was a bad thing that somebody tried to run away. You understand what I'm saying? And it's really fucked up, and it's really terrible. Alicia, she was um, also injured. Alicia, she, time, Alicia, who was Jimmy okay. died, but one of the other staff members that was there at the time, Alicia, okay. who was the daughter of the nurse. Alicia, she was um, also injured, and two years later she died. That's terrible. And she was also left disabled after being attacked by Clay. So the mother of um, the so I guess this kid attacked this other girl and killed somebody else. Kate Clay, who killed the staff, she was married to the brother of the president of the program, which I also believe is a conflict of interest. I don't know Maybe. why they would do that. Of, of um, the kid, and she was also left to say. Trying to understand what she, what she's. So the mother of um, mother the kid of Clay, the who kid the Clay. Staff, okay. she was married to the brother of the president of the program. The brother of the president, brother of the president of the program. Jesus. Okay. Which I also believe is a conflict of interest. I don't know why they. I mean, maybe I don't know the legalities there or the issues there. I feel like you might be just saying it's a conflict of interest to try to like you know uh, bolster up your point. We'll do that in. So it was really sad that right they now. wouldn't tell us what happened and all that. And any of the kids that were there, like they couldn't talk about it, but they were like really traumatized by it. Even the ones that weren't there were traumatized by it. Like I heard it over the walkie. Like that's scary. Like like so you got kids here that are killing people. And like I said earlier, this is a reasonable thing. Like okay, so somebody died. Two people died. One person died. One was left disabled. That's massively traumatic to everybody there so like you to that they should be instantly provided with i don't know if they were but like mental health counseling for sure because like that is huge like you that's a huge thing like being like under like seeing or being around uh death like that is really traumatizing my <sighs> mom had always threatened me as like oh i'm sending you away i'm sending you away but she never did it this was the first time well, she, she really did. did it like i i never thought my mom would do this so what parents need to understand is if your child is acting out because of trauma like sexual abuse or maybe like the kid's parents got divorced or just anything like that you don't send your kid to a program like this you need to send your kid to a program where they're not being punished and, and it's not about everything's not about you're in trouble you're in trouble and well i mean this is for particularly bad kids um and also like yeah of course like there's shitty parenting involved that's why you gotta send the parents to a camp too you know what i'm saying and it's just it's just really fucked up you're you're just using children to keep your ranch going and you're not even feeding them or letting them sleep in decent condition just doing things that Maybe we just don't know what a decent condition is to her you know what i mean 
She even said that she was very bougie. So, like, you know, what's a decent... A decent condition to me is probably a much lower standard than decent conditions of most of you guys. Like, uh, you know, tent in the backyard is a pretty decent condition to me. You know what I mean? Especially if it's, like, something like this. Like, we... <laughs> Not that big of a deal. No one would ever want done to their child and not even that. And, and it wouldn't happen to my child because I'm not gonna let my child be terrible. And doing it to kids who are so helpless. And when you know that you're watching their letters, you know that they don't have any contact with their parents. So I don't, I'm not really sure why Dr. Phil still sends kids here. It just, it really doesn't make sense. Doesn't like, are you trying to help them it. or are you trying to hurt them even more? Cause I mean, we all know he's a phony as it is, but like, don't be sending kids somewhere just to make, make it look like you're trying to do something. There was already lawsuits before I went there. There's now many more after, but there was one as far back as 2012. Now this place has been going since the 90s, I think. So I could just imagine like how much bad stuff has happened there. These are documented things that have happened. And just the abuse, the, the malnourishing, physical abuse, mental abuse, all that and this place is still up and running it just doesn't make sense how, how could you not know about the murder it was on national like national news how could you not know about that all right so this is just like a, if you are in an urgent situation and need help call 911 if you're having suicidal feelings call toll free or text this if you're an lgbt Q and in need of support call this if your child being abused or no child being abused call this okay now Okay, so they say it again at the end. All statements in this video are my opinion only and are based on my personal experience. They are not to be taken as fact. So like right off the bat, the fact that you're not willing to stand on your words is very, very disappointing uh, because like you know that you're saying this to keep yourself out of like le like legal like liability, right? You're saying that this is an opinion and there's absolutely no, not only that there's no evidence, but like also like I, I she's not even standing for it. She's not even standing on it. If she was really willing to stand on this, she would, wouldn't be having like a, a, a trigger warning in the beginning or whatever.